Hey there, America, and Canada, and perhaps some people overseas. Welcome to Season 3 of The Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams, your host, back for another 230 days of fun and hepatic punishment. Speaking of which, very special thanks to all of you who helped me restock my liquor cabinet over the summer. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have to drink tonight, but uh, good to know that I can if I need to. Another exciting thing for Season 3, I now have some items for sale in the Final Wager store, which I'll be putting up this week. You can get this nice water bottle with my colors on it. I also have a flask, which I have not ordered for myself yet. And uh, I think I showed you the computer case. I might even have a polo shirt. Who knows? Possibilities are endless, but keep an eye out for that. Plenty of interviews and fun and laughter and drinking to be had this 30-second season of Jeopardy with me. We're off to a great start here tonight. Tara, our returning champion from the end of last season, 22,000. Ed in second place, 17-2. Rook in third, 13-2. Just couldn't ask for a better way to start things off. So, I gotta say, one of the weird things about taking six weeks off from doing something is that you come back to it and it's a little bit like baby steps getting into it. So just sitting, setting up the widget on the right-hand side of my homepage took about 30 minutes because I'd forgotten all the steps that became second nature over the course of 46 weeks last year. So similarly, I hope I can still do math. We'll start with Tara and Ed. If Ed doubles up, this is kind of weird to be doing this again. 34-4, so Tara, 12,400. It's a big wager. If she's wrong with that, she'll be left with 9,600. So to stay above that, Rook oops, can wager up to 3,600. And Ed, uh, that's another 4,000, so 7,600. So far, so good. Now we will look at Rook doubling up. If he doubles up, he'll have 26.4. So to get above that, Terra could wager uh, 4,400. And remember, because we can't tie anymore, I'm going to add the 1 to the minimum scores later and subtract the dollar from the maximum scores. But not yet, because I like round numbers. And if, uh, what was this, 26.4, if Ed wants to cover that, that's 9,200. So, Ed is in what we call Stratton's Dilemma, where he can either cover Rook or wager so as not to fall below Terra in the case they both miss. That is going to be it. I'm sure I'm already forgetting something. Uh, oh yeah, well, to the Stratus Dilemma, this is not going to change. Uh, this 9200 wager is going to put him down to 8000, but Terra's already going to fall above that, so phew, doesn't matter. Next up, we look at what will happen if other people wager rationally. If Rook uh, goes for this 3600, He's only going to have 16.8, so Ed could wager no more than 400. I'll put that down there. And eh, not really a big fan of this kind of wager, but Tara could wager up to 5,200. Because it's always good to close off the rough edges. Uh, you know, this $400 wager, Ed uh, would get up to 17.6, and Rook would just have to go all in, I guess. So. I'll allow an all-in wager here. If uh, Ed goes for the 7600 amount, he's going to have 24.8. So if Tara's being tricky, she could go for uh, 2800. But if she's going to do that, she might as well. Well, let's put it here for now. If Tara does that and gets it wrong, she's going to be left with. Uh, 19.2, so to cover that, Ed would have to wager 2,000. Now I'm starting to run out of room already. Okie doke. I think that's going to be it for those. And now we go on to the... Uh, 
zero cover wagers. And I appreciate your patience while I slowly get my brain back into gear here. Tara and Ed are separated by 4,800, so uh, if I'm Tara, I want to cap my wager at that. I might also take this $400 wager into account and think about capping at 400 but that's just probably thinking too much about it. Uh, the minimum 4,800 is going to apply here as well. Rook, uh, wait, what is double at 9600? That's already going to be too much. Well, this is already an all-in wager. If, uh, well, Rook and Ed are separated by 4,000, so to cover this, Rook would have to wager at least 4,000 already all-in. Ed would have to cap his wager at 4,000. I don't see any way he can do that. And uh, Tara and Rook are separated by 98, no, 8,800. So nothing really doing there. Well, uh... Quite an intriguing show of wits here. Ben Ingram tweeted that I should be drinking right now, but I am actually very happy with all three of these wagers, surprisingly. Ed thought that Rook was going to go small on a category like American Poetry. Why not? Maybe he doesn't like poetry. Who knows? Uh, Rook thought that Ed might go small, perhaps, and wagered everything. This is that mind games I like to talk about, but we rarely see, and they happen tonight. Tara went for the typical lockout wager. Didn't work for anyone. Of course, as any good Vermont boy does, I have the complete collection of uh, Robert Frost poetry, and that was an instigate for me. Not my typical showing on a poetry category, but hey, it worked out this time. So, one down. 229 to go. I feel fresh. I feel like I'm in the first few hundred meters of a marathon. Pretty excited about the new season, new graphics, and a uh, earlier than thought tournament of champions. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you'll join me once again tomorrow on the final wager.